Hi, Coach Devin here. I want to talk about something that has been on my mind recently. Um, when coronavirus reared its ugly head and things, you know, obviously Italy was in quarantine and then it came across the Atlantic and we were getting more and more people here. And the next thing you know, a lot of us are under quarantine. They're saying stay home. And, you know, Stephen McNeil saying stay the blazes home, etc. What the background for that was consistently was we are trying to flatten the curve and a lot of people talk about flattening the curve i think a lot of people don't understand what that means what flattening the curve means is you're trying to make sure that the healthcare system is not overwhelmed so you don't have this happen where you have a bajillion cases or in, you know in where i'm from there's about a million people uh we don't want to have you know 300,000 cases and the healthcare system completely overrun and they can't handle the caseload. That's the idea is that we flatten that curve so we don't have this. We have sort of a slower burst through it. So yes, people will get sick, but we won't overwhelm that healthcare system and the healthcare system will survive. And we can't have, you know, 300,000 people in the hospital because it doesn't work. It's not going to be feasible. So you know what? I, when it happened, I said, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I understand. We don't want healthcare to collapse. Healthcare can be tough enough as it is, as we all know. So, you know, we don't want this thing to collapse. We want healthcare to, to survive this. How do we make healthcare survive it? We stay home. Seemed like pretty simple logic. What I find interesting is the flattening of the curve comments lasted for, you know, quite a while. People were always talking about how they were flattening the curve and there was every hashtag in the world about flatten the curve this, flatten the curve that. Great. Makes sense. I, I, I got it. I understand my business obviously as a gyms was one of the ones that was directly affected and we were closed by government order and that, you know it, it, at the time you know it makes sense I, I get it we don't want a bunch of people dead it's the last thing i want to see happen what i don't understand is the fact that now we have gone from flattening the curve to let's find a cure okay let's let's backtrack here for a second if we're trying to flatten the curve where i'm from we have flattened the curve our high point was about 50 to 60 cases in a day. We're down to about in single digits, you know, three, three, one, six, four, one, you know, that is where we are now. So we have flattened the curve. Now I can speak from experience because I got very sick um, about a week or so into this forced isolation thing with the flattening of the curve. So I got, I got my back got very sore. I ended up going to the hospital a couple times. Uh, the second time they told me I had pneumonia, sent me home. I mean, they sent me home a number of times. Um, it wasn't until two full weeks basically into being in a horrible amount of pain that they said, oh, by the way, did anybody call you and say that you have a staph infection and it's in the discs in your back? So nobody did that. And so obviously that was, you know, got me very sick. I spent some time in the hospital. What I find interesting is I was in and out of the hospital a bunch of times. So a lot of people weren't in the hospital during um, during what was happening uh, with you know the flattening of the curve. I was in emergency a bunch. There weren't a lot of people in emergency, which is probably good. It means that a lot of people were, uh, go to emergency for no good reason. But what I can say is that I spent some time in the COVID unit because I had breathing problems because my back hurt so much because the discs were infected uh, that I couldn't I couldn't open up my chest and breathe. So right away, doctors assumed you have coronavirus. That is the first thought process they're looking for it. They've been told to look for it. So, you know, right away, they're like, hey, you have coronavirus. So I spent an entire like 12 hour day in a coronavirus ward in a smaller hospital in uh, Sackville, Cobbequid, actually. And on that day, in 12 hours, there were two nurses, one doctor and me. That was it. And at that time, they were 30, 40 cases a day. So they were not overwhelmed. In fact, they had all kinds of rooms. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how many. I was in a lot of pain. I wasn't paying attention and counting rooms. But there were a lot of rooms, and I was the only patient for the entire day. Now, that made me say, hmm, that's a little interesting. So what I don't understand is now why we... So obviously we flattened the curve pretty early. 
Uh, I, I think we can argue that. Yes, it's great. And I don't disagree with closing things. And anybody who's going to get on here and say, oh, you're, you're, you know, you're one of the, I'm not one of those guys on the stage showing up saying, give me my freedom. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is, though, we have flattened the curve. And the curve really wasn't all that bad before. Um, because, and I have anecdotal, I guess, evidence or real evidence because I was there. I know what happened. Uh, so there wasn't an enormous uptick. They were not overwhelmed, which is great. That means we did our job. We stayed home and we didn't get an overwhelming numbers like they did in, you know, New York and lots of other places in the world. We didn't have that. And that's good. That means that what we did worked. What I don't understand now is that we're, you know, in midway through June, whatever, the 21st, but I mean midway through June, we're into June now. Um, we're in June now and we're still talking about flattening the curve. We're still very concerned about opening the economy. And I get that. I understand it. You don't want to just open Harry Carey and get a big surge. I understand. But my question comes back again. Where did we go from flattening the curve to finding a cure and everybody just stayed home? Because we flattened the curve. I mean, once we were in May, you know, three weeks ago, we should have been able to go, okay, we did a pretty good job. The numbers are coming down. That's good. Let's plan. How do we reopen? How do we make steps? Our government in Nova Scotia still does not have an answer for how we are opening and when we're opening. We only found out two days ago that we're opening in June sometime, but we don't know. Pretty much every other province in Canada and most states now in the U.S. are open. Now, you can argue yes or no. Quebec has high numbers. New York has high numbers. Florida has high numbers. Yeah, I get it. I understand you can argue some of those things, but my question really comes down to once you have flattened that curve, once you have more information on this virus, which we now have, why is it that in Nova Scotia, we're still sitting on our hands? You know, why don't we have a plan going forward? Every other province has a plan. How can we not have a plan already? It doesn't make any sense to me. And I don't understand why we suddenly went to, from saying, we have to flatten a curve to we need it. We need a complete, you know, we need to be healed before we go back to work. Because there's a lot of people still online saying, I will not go back to work. I don't think it's safe. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. You know, and I understand why they're nervous. I get it. I'm not negative about them being nervous. But what I am saying is we've already flattened the curve. We've already done the stuff at the beginning that we were supposed to do. Now we're going to continue sitting. We need to make some plans. We need to think ahead. The economy at some point has to reopen and I have a news flash for everybody and it's going to suck. We're going to open the economy. Coronavirus will probably be here for another year or more. And you know what? We're all going to go to work and we're all going to figure it out. That's the way it is. You can say, I'm going to barricade myself in my house, but you know what? The government's going to stop giving you money. You're going to run out of money and you're going back to work. That's just the way it works. So we need to figure out a way to live with coronavirus, not say we're just going to hide out. And you can make arguments for and against, you know, the whole point of, you know, should we have isolated? Should we not isolate it? I don't have, honestly, I don't have answers and I'm not going to try to pretend I do. I really don't know if we should have isolated or not isolated. I will say that I think here in Nova Scotia and in Atlantic Canada, we've done a very good job with things and the numbers are super low now. And because the numbers are so low, that's great. It turns out we're the best place in Canada to live because it came here last. But what I don't get is it came here last. Our numbers are lower than any, basically anywhere in North America. It looks like, I mean, anywhere in Canada for sure. Why are we still in Nova Scotia dragging our feet so much? And why do we not have a plan? Where is the plan? Stephen McNeil is our premier. Where's the plan, Steve? You've had lots of time. Like when it was March, I get it. You don't know. You're not sure. April, okay. You've only had a couple of weeks. May? Dude, we've been closed for like 60 plus days. If you can't come up with a plan in 60 days or just copy a plan from somebody else, how does that even work? How are you, what, what are you doing? Call some other premiers on the phone and say, hey, what are you doing? Oh, okay. We'll adapt some things. It's not hard. This is not rocket science. Unfortunately, it just isn't. We do have to open. It isn't going away. So let's figure out the safest possible way to do it. I just do not, for the life of me, understand why we have changed our entire process and say, oh, we, maybe we shouldn't open. Maybe we should stay closed. I mean, there's arguments out there now. When the Nova Scotia government first pitched out an idea, they said, hey, um, 
let's open in phases, and which is great. I, I don't disagree with the phases. Let's give 28 days between every phase. Why? Every other province in Canada was doing 14, and we have to do 28. Why is that? What's the reasoning for that? But we want to be last? Why do we want to be last? I think, unfortunately, Stephen McNeil got too much into Stay the Blazes Home, which, FYI, was not what the government was saying at the time. That is a call phrase. It's just him trying to get reelected. It is what it is. The guy wants to get reelected, so he comes up with a little catchphrase. It's on t-shirts, mugs, everywhere. Everybody's, yeah, Stay the Blazes Home. That's not what the government was saying at the time. And that's what, to me, is disappointing because he has politicized the coronavirus for his own good down the road. And I, you know what? I wasn't negative about Stephen McNeil. Before this thing happened, I thought he was a pretty good premier. Didn't really have any problems with him. Uh, now, I think he has fallen into the trap of how the heck can I, can I make some political hay and make myself look good because of coronavirus? And I think that's a shame. So, comment. Let me know what you think. Have we flattened the curve? Are we flattening the curve? Is the curve flat? Should we open? Let me know what you think. Have yourself an amazing day. Stay safe, everybody. Don't fight the awesome.